everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 10 of my book read. Let's get going. So this will also be a fun video to do. I thought I would share some of the books that could go with your horror, scary, movies, whatever you want to call it. So, let's get so going. So if you like movies that are like killer, slasher kind, uh, you should do The Words Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. It's Friday the summer after graduation and it couldn't have come quickly enough for best friends and fellow outsiders, Nina and Josie. But when a three day hike deep in the forest turns deadly, Nina and Josie are testing the ways they never expected in high school and are soon fighting for their own survival. The next one will be 10 by Gretchen McNeil. BFFs Meg and Minnie are always looking forward to a weekend getaway filled with party and without care in the world, but when they stumble upon a DVD with a terrifying message, it's clear that a mysterious killer has other plans. And when people start getting murdered one by one, it's up to Meg to figure out the killer's identity, unless they have found her first. F 10 teens, 3 days, 1 killer. And if, so this one, if you like psychological, psychology, homework, you should read They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. Jill Newman is almost done with high school and the memories from freshman year when her best friend Sharia was murdered by her boyfriend Graham. But senior year doesn't exactly go as planned Tech, um, because Jill starts getting mysterious texts proclaiming Graham's innocence. Suddenly, Jill finds herself down a rabbit hole of clues as she works to find Sherry's real killer who might be closer to her than she ever expected. And the next one is Horrid by Katrina Lino. After the death of her father, Jane North Robinson moves into her mother's old house in Maine. She hopes to start over working to make new friends at school and gleaning insight into her father's life from memories left over in her mother's former home. But one day, Jane opens a lock in storage room to strange to discover that it's actually a little girl's bedroom, one that's full of sinister secrets. And those secrets unravel, Jane must make them with everything that she's been avoiding and something much dark. My next one is The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gould. When Logan Orts Woodley arrives in Snake by Oregon, she sends us a right away that says something off about the town. Teenagers are going missing, but they aren't fully leaving. Logan ultimately teams up with Ash Ashley Barton, whose boyfriend was the first to disappear, and Linda. Together, they hope to figure out what has been haunting the town, but they uncover secrets far more deep than they ever thought possible. And if you like gothic themes, you should be gallant by V.E. Schwab. When Olivia Primer is called home to Gallant, she's not quite sure what to expect and certainly not her hostile cousin or the spirits that lurk in the hallways, but when she uncovers a secret within the walls of the manor, she starts to unravel generations of mystery, including the doors tied to her own parents, and as she gets deeper into the past, Olivia must decide whether to choose between good and evil or if both live within her at the same time. The next one is The Book of Living Secrets by Madeline Rook. Best friends Adele and Connie have one major thing in common. They share the love of the gothic romance ta novel title Monia. So when they are invited to magical visit the world of the book, they can't resist. However, the novel's universe is nothing like they pictured. Instead, it's nightmarish and filled with otherworldly horrors. They realize that something deadly is hidden beneath the famous story, and it's up to them to solve the mystery, if they want to escape and return. Next one is Lake Sage by Linda Clemston. When Violetta Gracing finds herself living at Lauren Sullivan's estate after her brother agrees to lend him his powers, she doesn't expect to fall for him. Lauren's dark reputation precedes him, and Lita soon learns that there's more to the boy who is rumored to be a monster, like the fact that he's bound to the evil and mysterious Lord Undan, and cursed by his pill that ties him to the ominous lakes behind his mansion. Linton must work with Rowan to help break the curse, while confronting the darkness that lives inside her as well. And if you like ghost and haunting movies, you should try Might, Might Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. Marigold is forced to move into a renovated home with her mother and a 10-year-old stepsister, and she quickly learns that her house has some secrets of its own. Eerie things begin happening with the walls of her new home on Maple Street, and her stepsister Piper suddenly has an imaginary friend 
who seems to loathe Marie. But it's not just the house that has secrets. Marie's new town does too, and it's up to her to uncover all of them in time before they catch up to her first. My next one is This Is Not A Ghost Story by Andrea Portes. It's the summer after high school graduation and Daffodil Franklin has, set, has a plan set. She will be house-sitting at the sprawling mansion, but there's more to this large manual than meets the eye. Secrets are burning within the walls, and the estate has a grudge of its own, and Daffodil might just be the house next victim, or the key to solving everything. And if you like something witchy, go for Ecstasia by Claire Legrand. Ecstasia takes readers to a small village where a girl joins a coven in order to rid her community of an ancient evil. After several people in her town have died, the girl becomes one of the four acclaimed saints. Throwing herself into a blood-drenched quest filled with dark magic and nightmarish creatures, but while trying to rid her village of death and destruction, she might uncover secrets about her village and about herself that are far more sinister in the process. My next one is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. Witches have controlled the climate for centuries, but the power is waning amid climate change and man-made discretion. Destruction. It's up to Clara and Emma Witch whose power is tied to all four seasons to help stop some of the most deadly storms to the world has ever seen. The only problem is with that Clara doesn't want to do anything with her power, especially when it seems to hurt everyone around her, that is until she meets Song, her trainer. And she starts to fall for him, Clara must decide when to let her into her abilities or protect the ones she loves. My next one is The Witch Heaven by Sasha Peyton Smith. After a mysterious incident involving a dead man and a pair of scissors, Frances Hallowell is whisked away to Hag's Heaven Sanitarium under the pretense that she is deadly ill, but the sanitarium is actually a school for witches, sending Frances into a magical spiral in which she must confront her newfound power and the secrets that come with it. When she meets a magical boy in her dreams, who is able to teach her more about her abilities, she realizes that she might have more power than she ever thought possible. But with power comes secrets, like the truth about what happened to her murdered brother, and a bigger evil at bay in her city. If you like monster movies, you should, you should try White Big Teeth by Rose Isabel. Elena is out and has found refuge away from a wild monstrous family while at boarding school for years. But when she's forced to go home, she struggles to find acceptance from her relatives, who are more likely to prowl the woods than sit around the dinner table. Yet ultimately, Elena must find a way to connect with them in order to keep her family together, and perhaps discover her inner darkness in the process too. Do you want a zombie? Well, he is one. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Jane McCain is finishing studies at Miss Prince's School of Combat, ready to take her flight, in Korea as intended. She has grown up among the dead, having been born right after the corpses of fallen soldiers at the battles of Gettysburg and Chancellorville began to walk again, but she doesn't want anything to do with that. However, when families in Baltimore begin to go missing, Jane doesn't have a choice. She's suddenly entangled in the mess of constituencies and conflict between the dead and the living. My next one is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. After the death of the parents, Rin and her siblings have been trying to make ends meet by working as grave diggers in the small village of Colvin. There's just one problem. The corpses don't always stay in the ground. When Rin crosses paths with Ellis, a map maker with intriguing history, she's forced to face the town's darkness head on. Together, they try to untangle a decades old curse and figure out what is making the corpses return, along with the truth about each other. Okay, so those are all the books that can go with your horror, scary movies. You know, just the ones that you like to read with. Um, otherwise, let me know what kind of books you like to go with your movies. And please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time you post. And I will see you in my next one.